Well, a jury says Rolling Stone magazine and reporter Sabrina Erderly is liable for malice for publishing a now discredited story about a gang rape at a University of Virginia fraternity house. The multi-million dollar lawsuit was brought by Nicole Aramo. She's an administrator at the school. The 2014 story falsely reported that Aramo discouraged a student at the school from reporting the alleged rape. A police investigation found no evidence that the incident ever occurred. Joining me now by phone is CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Ricky, I want to, this article, boy, did it set up a firestorm at the University of Virginia and really schools nationwide. It even prompted police to launch an investigation into the alleged assault. What do you make of this verdict? I actually expected this verdict. I had said uh, on CBS this morning that Nicola Ramo may be one of the only, if not the only, uh, public figure. She was labeled a limited purpose public figure. When we think of a public figure, usually we think of a politician or a celebrity. But Nicola Ramo, the uh, then dean, had uh, been the face of the university. So the judge declared as a ruling she was a limited purpose public figure. Why is this important and why is this verdict really so interesting? What happens is if you are a public figure, you cannot win if a newspaper or magazine simply publishes something negligently. You have to show that the magazine, in this case, or newspaper, Rolling Stone, published with actual malice. And another way of phrasing that is a reckless disregard for the truth. That standard is astronomically high. But I said it once, and I believe it's true because the jury said it too, that in this particular case, Nicola Ramo, as a limited-purpose public figure, could show that this was terrible, terrible journalism, and it really was done with reckless disregard for the truth. Ricky, how were they able to prove that there was, in fact, malice? Well, when we think of malice, the normal person thinks of ill will or hatred. That's not what the law means. What the law means in this idea of reckless disregard for the truth, which is another way of phrasing actual malice, what it means is that you did nothing, in essence, to be able to corroborate your story. And what the jury found in this case was that the reporter had a preconceived agenda. She wanted a story of a heinous sexual assault, and she wanted to show an administrator who was callous toward a sexual assault victim. So she went looking for a story with an ending in mind. So when this woman, Jackie, told her this story about this outrageous, horrendous gang rape at a fraternity house, that what happened was Jackie also went along with painting the dean of students, Nicole Aramo, as someone who basically told her, you know, we don't want to rape school reputation and discouraged her from going to the police or doing any further reporting. Well, then nothing could have been further from the truth. Nicola Ramo had been very sympathetic to Jackie and really was there to support her. But if you're a reporter who wants the ending you want, you're not interested in the truth. And that's what the jury found in this case. Ricky, this lawsuit sought $7.5 million, but the actual amount, what will that be decided by a juror? How much are they likely to award this particular woman? I don't think I can predict at this point what this jury will award uh, Nicola Ramo because we have seen verdicts in recent times, um, and the easy one to look to is Hulk Hogan. We have seen verdicts in recent times about defamation um, that are astronomical. So in this case, she doesn't have to, Ms. Ramo does not have to stick to the $7.5 million figure because it could be any figure that the jury feels is appropriate. 
Are there metrics? Certainly there are metrics, but the metrics really have to do with her job. Did it suffer? We have to remember here, she's still gainfully employed by the university, albeit in a different position and in a position that does not interact with students, which is not something that pleases her. But nevertheless, she has a job. Where the damage here was to her reputation, which is the essence of the tort of defamation, and what she suffered, the hate mail, the hate email, the um, email and mail that went toward her saying that the people which she was raped or her daughter was raped, the kind of relentless look at her as the quote-unquote chief villain of this entire incident, um, that's a number that is very hard to quantify. And you certainly will also be looking at what the finances of Rolling Stone are. So you wind up in a situation like Hulk Hogan, where if they see that the magazine has lots and lots of money, that the jury certainly is not only looking to compensate, but they're looking to punish. Oh, fascinating take on all this. CBS News legal analyst, Ricky Kleeman. Thanks for joining us, Ricky. Thank you, Rena.